the third and final main business meeting of the World Science Fiction Society meeting at Worldcon 75 will be in order at 10.01 a.m. Uh, yeah, leave the microphone turned off when it's not being used. Thank you for getting to put it on the charter. I am the chairman, Kevin Stanley. To my left is Paul Dormer, the timekeeper. To my immediate right is the secretary, Linda Dinneroff. To her right is the deputy presiding officer, Donald Eastlake, who is running the slides and has done a great deal of work uh, keeping them up to date mostly from day to day. Linda has been spending her days beavering away at the, at the notes and agenda. And in the back of the room behind the camera is Lisa Hayes, the official videographer. The, uh, recording is like 66, I think. The, um, this meeting is being recorded. It is also probably being live streamed on the, it is live, okay, the live stream is running, thank you. It is being live streamed on the Worldcon 75 YouTube events channel. The recordings are also there of what of basically of the raw live, live stream, I understand. And that is why the World Con Events channel is not rushing to get the individual recordings we're doing. We're going to go ahead and edit that together and put those up as the official record. Um, if you do not want your image and voice to appear in the recording, you need to sit in the area behind the pillars here. If you speak in this meeting, your image and voice will be recorded. There will be short technical timeouts every 20 to 30 minutes, uh, about one minute long or so, to uh, allow a cartridge change on the camera. Those are fairly short. It doesn't take that long, but, it, but we do need to get it done to do the cartridge changes. There are attendance sheets. If you've signed up on previous days, you just have to find your name in there and check it off again. Uh, if you've not been here before, what kept you? Go ahead and sign up on the sheet. Um, I think there may still be business activity ribbons back there. I'm not yes, sure. Yeah. Please remember to silence your sound making devices. And as I was saying before the meeting was called to order, come to a microphone and speak into it so you can be heard. Face the audience and but you are speaking only to the chair. Don't talk to other members across the room. I get really testy about that. If you are unable to stand or come to a microphone, indicate by raising your hand or otherwise giving, getting our attention so that we can bring a microphone to you. And remember that we will have, we may still have some debate today, so it need not be factual, but you do need to be civil. I'm not going to talk about the appeals slide at this, at this point. So, today we are on the final meeting. We are scared. We have five, we have this room for five hours. Don't make us use it. <laughs> what we will do today is pick up those things that we haven't yet gotten to in the agenda, which consists of three constitutional amendments that are awaiting ratification, and um, off the top of my head, I believe three new business items that have not been disposed of in some other way. After we have dealt with the three items that are up for ratification, the motion to adjourn sine die, which is finally and done for the year, is in order after that point. Anything not dealt with when the meeting adjourns finally dies. I'm hoping we have enough time, to, we're going to have enough time and energy to, to take those last three items though. About 15 minutes after the final adjournment, the WUSPA Smart Protection Committee, which is not part of the business meeting but is elected by it, will meet in this same room to hold our organizational meeting and I hope get at least eight of our members uh, to, so we have a quorum to elect new officers. Note something that we did not mention yesterday during Dublin's site selection presentation is that they have appointed Paul Dormer as their representative to the Mark Protection Committee. That sounds in the record. And therefore, I believe we are on to constitutional amendments. Slide seven. Okay, Linda's trying to find the spot where she is. We're now on, let me see, not 71. What slide are we up to now? Yes. 
Seventy-two. <laughs> oh. Item C.8. Everything else before that has been dealt with one way or the other. This is retrospective improvement, part one. This motion would modify the retro Hugos. Move to replace the current retrospective Hugos section, which is 3.13, with the following. This is short enough that I can read the whole thing to you. This is a replacement for the retro Hugos. A Worldcon held in a year that is an exact multiple of 25 years after a year in which no Hugos were presented may conduct nominations and elections for retrospective year Hugos for that year with procedures as for the current Hugos provided that the year was 1939 or later and that no previous Worldcon has awarded retrospective year Hugos for that year. The effect of this would be to allow retro Hugos for the three-year window in which there were no between the third and four, four I'm sorry, I always forget that. The four-year window in between the third and fourth world cons, in which there were no world cons held uh, due to a disruption. <laughs> <laughs> a late unpleasantness, yes. Uh, Ms. Hayes. I wish to move to postpone indefinitely. Uh, the motion to put that one, there was a motion to postpone indefinitely. The motion to postpone indefinitely is not in order for two reasons. First, it can only be made during the preliminary business meeting. And secondly, it is not in order to against pending constitutional ratifications. Uh, Change that to move to call the question. The motion to call the question is not in order until at least <laughs> one person from each side has had an opportunity to debate the question. Is there anyone before but I, but I may say some time, is there anyone who wishes to debate this motion either in favor of or against it? Hearing none, I can put the question to a vote. All those in favor of ratifying item C.8, retrospective Hugo's, the majority being necessary, raise your hands. Hands down, those opposed. Hands down, the has it. The motion is ratified and, and takes effect at the end of this rule con of first effecting next year. The secretary needs to get that. We went pretty quickly on that one. Yeah, yeah. Ratified by show of hands. Ne next year's World Con, even if we are eligible to do so has no intention of giving out retro Hugo's. I, I, I might have to consider that, but I am the division manager for it, so still waiting for the secretary in okay, so. so you know we're going to be doing C9 next. C9 is on the same page. What? Oh, yeah, this is yes, page 20 on in your document. Item is C.9, the record retrospective improvements part two, to add the following new text at the end of retrospective Hugo section with the following section 3.13.2. In any listing of Hugo Award winners published by a Worldcon committee or WSPIS, retrospective Hugo Awards shall be distinguished and annotated with the year in which such retrospective Hugos were voted. We do actually already do this, but it would uh, it'd make it a requirement rather than what we uh, uh, than just optional. <coughs> Is there anyone who wishes to debate this question in any way? Hearing none, on the question of ratifying C.9, a majority being necessary to ratify, all those in favor raise your hands. Hands down, those opposed. Hands down, the affirmative has it. Item C.9 is ratified and takes effect at the end of this world con. We'll move on 
when the secretary is ready. Next is going to be C10. Uh, item C10 is a universal suffrage. All right, sir. The uh, universal suffrage. Move to amend the Wisconsin Constitution to limit the convention in issuing memberships that have no voting rights by inserting text as follows. Uh, it adds a new section, 1.5.x. Uh, that no convention committee shall sell a membership that is available to persons of the age of majority at the time of the convention as defined by the laws of the country and other jurisdictions where the convention is being held. That allows attendance and full participation for the entire duration of the convention, and that does not include all WISPAS voting rights. Should no law of the country and other jurisdictions where the convention is being held to find an age of majority, the convention shall consider all persons 18 years of age or older as being of the age of majority. The effect of this would be to prohibit a Worldcon from selling an all-convention pass for the entire length of the convention that did not include the vote, WUSPAS voting rights, such as business meeting attendance, site selection, and in that particular, and nominating and voting rights it, as applicable. Um, I, let me finish stating what my intention on the motion, and then I'll take the query, okay? Um, if you would not be able to sell an all convention pass to an adult uh, that did not include WISPAS voting rights, it's trying to not, not let you decouple membership from attendance. It would have no effect uh, on the uh, reduced price memberships we have for first-time attendees or military or uh, other, all various different young adult, what have you, any of those classes. Uh, it, it would also, Worldcons could continue to sell individual day passes. Uh, it's, that, that, is, that is my understanding of the motion. And now the member has a question. You stand up and you can either go here or you go over there. Yeah, he's going to go over the lectern. And once again, when you get to the lectern or to the microphone, state your name before beginning. Good morning. Uh, I have the following inquiry. Is voting for the Cubans one of the WSFS voting rights? Yes. Let me state this. The answer to your question in short terms is yes. And the member can be seated unless you have a follow-on question. Well, would the it seems that this, if accepted as it stands, it might keep, it might make it impossible to sell memberships after the voting is done for the Hugo's. I understand the question. Although the right to vote for the Hugo Awards is a wispless right, you can't use the right after the subvoting has closed. At the door, members who buy a full five day membership are members of WISPAS and have voting rights, but the, the Hugo Award voting is closed several weeks beforehand. You cannot go back in time and do it. That's the reason. You, it's voting rights that exist. The right no longer exists once voting has closed for that. Similarly, somebody voting for site selection this year closed the day before yesterday. Sir, Sir. Sir. he just he doesn't have his actual name. Yeah. It's a, Voting for site selection closed a couple of days ago. Somebody could come up and buy a full membership in this convention, which includes the right to vote, but you can't vote on site selection because it's over. But they could come in. But they could come here for a little bit longer. <laughs> <laughs> and furthermore, they would have nominating rights to next year's World Cup. Let's state as carefully as I can, your WISPAS voting rights include <coughs> The right to nominate for this year's Hugo Awards, the right to nominate for next year's Hugo Awards, the right to vote on this year's Hugo Awards, the right, subject to paying an additional amount, to vote on the Worldcon site selection, and the right to attend and participate in the WISPAS business meeting if you have an attending membership. 
I think I got them all. Yeah. Is there anybody who thinks I missed one? Uh, temporarily, you got the back extra year. Uh, yeah, I'm thinking in general. Okay, in general. All right. Is there anyone unclear on what this motion's intent is? All right, does somebody wish to speak in I, I, I believe there's some people who want to debate it. Let me ask, are there people who wish to debate it? Oh, I thought that I saw some earlier who wanted to. Very well then, and if no one wishes to debate it, I'll put the question. A majority being necessary to ratify this. All those in favor of ratifying C.10 universal suffrage, raise your hands. Hands down, those opposed? Hands down. The uh, motion is ratified and takes effect at, uh, affecting, well, at the end of this world, first affecting next year. Yes. The, let me see here. C11 and C12 have already been dealt with. That concludes all of the items of that were passed on from last year's world con. That brings us to section D.10, or D.1 rather, D.10, I was reading the number of it, section D. Chairman, it, is, it was my understanding that we had postponed indefinitely D5? Yes. We did. It's, it, the report in the... Uh, you never did change that slide, did you? Oh, sorry. Yeah. Uh, it, it, yeah. The, the item that the chairman wrote for the newsletter is wrong. But by the time I realized it, it was too late to correct it. It was already in print. So, yeah. Uh, item D.4, and it was uh, passed on Friday. Item D.5 was postponed indefinitely by the preliminary meeting. That leaves us only items D1, D2, and D3. Because, looking ahead, items D6, D7, and D8 were all sent to the Hugo Awards Study Committee. That leaves us three items of new business. <coughs> yes, Hayes? I move to adjourn CNADA. Is there a second to the motion? Hearing none, the motion is not before the meeting. All right. It's not the shooting thing to okay. Item D.1 is a motion uh, called What Our Marks Really Are. And uh, I'll read it as it's printed, but uh, there, we, we found, and somebody emailed me who was, who was watching from the United States, right, wrote, wrote to me last night just spotting a mistake. But we'll read what's here and then we'll fix the mistake. Move to replace section 2.2 of the Constitution. That, by the way, is the section that has the boilerplate text about our service marks. To replace it with, every WorldCon and NASFIC committee shall include a notice in each of its publications that clearly acknowledges the service marks of the society. The Mark Protection Committee shall supply each WorldCon committee with the correct form of such notice. Is there anybody in the room who has spotted the mistake? Ah, yes. Is there any objection to striking out, shall supply each Worldcon committee, and inserting each, or each such convention committee? We accidentally forgot to tell the committee to tell NASFIX what the service committee is. <laughs> By replacing the second occurrence of Worldcon in the last sentence, if we strike out Worldcon and insert such convention, the sentence would then read, the Mark Protection Committee shall supply each such convention committee with the correct form of such notice. Rather than repeating Worldcon aspect, Worldcon aspect, it's better that way. Is there any objection to striking out the second occurrence of the, 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 the word Worldcon in the last sentence and inserting such convention. Such convention, such convention. Don't want to make Because then it would then, the, the, I, yeah, case of, it, it, yeah. it, it, the sentence would then read, the Mark Protection Committee shall supply each such convention committee with the correct form of such notice. Is there anyone who is unclear on what that change was? I don't see any. All right. 
Is there anyone who wishes to debate this? I, okay, I, okay, Mr. Pomerantz moves first. Mr. Chairman, and I move that we suspend the rules and adopt the amended amendment by acclamation. Uh, oh, yes. The motion's in order. Is there a second? Second. second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, Dr. Lurie, I know, but I've got to, I, 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 I can't take the question. All right? I, on, is there, there's, it's a non-debatable suspend the rules to suspend the rules and, and adopt this. By, uh, I'm not going to take the acclamation part of it. You're going to need a two-thirds vote to do this. Okay? A two-thirds vote being necessary to suspend the rules and adopt this without any further discussion or debate. All those in favor of immediately adopting this without further discussion or debate, raise your hands. Hands down. Those opposed? Oh, the chair thinks there was two-thirds there. Uh, <laughs> the rights of the members. Mr. Chair, I withdraw the motion. Is there the chair asking Adam, is there any objection to withdrawing the motion? I don't hear any. <laughs> Dr. Lurie. <laughs> this has four minutes to make. Mr. Chairman, I just have a question. Is it the intent of this motion that the website of such conventions constitutes a publication? If it uses, if it's something that the convention is using to use the marks, yes, it's it's meant to cover the usages of, of you know what how the how the individual world cons use the service marks. I mean, uh, I'm only going to I'm only going to unless you have problems standing, I'm only going to deal with people who rise um, over there, uh, uh, Mr. Walling. Yeah. I'm still in a um, I just, I, I'm not sure where this falls, so if this is the bait or whatever. Go ahead um, and say it. I'll yeah, I will. Uh, basically, uh, it is, uh, most bids will often insert a uh, service mark notice because they do use our service mark. So a Worldcon bid uh, will often on their flyers and say Worldcon is a service mark of this bid. And um, would this be required? Is this like I've never been actually clear if it's required by bids to do this? And if yes, should not the Mark Protection Committee also uh, give them the correct form of such a notice? Okay. The, the, and that's bids are the form of debate. The point is, is that we don't actually the existing text doesn't regulate it. It doesn't say anything about bid committees. Okay. And therefore, the chair doesn't think it's worth discussing. I mean, the Mark Protection Committee will probably do what it can to help bid committees get the, get the language right if they get it wrong. Thank you. Point of another another inquiry. Another inquiry. The member rule. If you're going to do that. Right? <laughs> Some people do. Okay. So. Uh, Boxing again, I'll go there. I have a piece of pub Worldcom publication here on the back of your member badge there for the useful phone numbers. That could be considered publication. Would it be required to list all the trademarks in the future for every single document that is published by a convention? The answer to the member's question, of would this be required on the on publications such as membership badges, is no, of course not. The existing language is parallel to this, and nobody does this anyway. Thank you. Um, I think members might do, if they really, really want to do this, they should go and look at the existing language, which the, so far all of the questions that have been raised will be raised by the language that's already been in the Constitution since it's for, for like 20, 30 years. Right. None of these edge cases are going to apply. The Market Protection Committee would just be required to help Worldcon committees out with their with the language. Are, is there anyone else who wishes to raise questions about it? Is there anyone who wishes to debate the question? Very well. On the motion to adopt, where I lost. Oh, there it is. On the motion to adopt this, which a majority being required to adopt initially. On the motion to adopt. D.1, all those in favor, raise your hands. Hands down. Those opposed, raise your hands. Hands down. The affirmative has it. This motion is initially passed and will be sent to San Jose for uh, ratification. Yes. When you're ready. 
Next is D2. Item D2 is called the Reasonable Amendment. Move to amend section 3.8.5, nominee diversity, by striking best and inserting reasonable. It changes one word in the middle of the paragraph. Uh, the sentence that would be affected is, the WorldCon Committee shall make reasonable efforts to notify those who would have been finalists in the absence of this subsection to provide them with the opportunity to withdraw. For what purpose does the member rise, Mr. Brommer? To take another shot. I move we suspend the rules and adopt the amendment. Is there a second to the motion to suspend the rules? Second. All right. A two-thirds vote being necessary. All those in favor of suspending the rules and immediately adopting this, raise your hands. Those opposed, raise your hands. Hands down. There being two-thirds in the affirmative, the motion is adopted. You, you short-circuited the whole process there uh, in that. Okay. I will state this again. What just happened was the rules that would otherwise interfere with doing so were suspended and the motion was adopted. Does that mean it has to be still ratified? Yes. 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 It is not possible to, for us to jump that. <laughs> Anything passed by this meeting, whether we do it by the normal process, by what just happened, if it passes the first time here, it must go on to WorldCon 76 in San Jose for ratification. Is there anybody who does not understand what I just said? Thank you. The last item, item D.3, make room, make room. Move to strike out the words, the lesser of 5,000 words or from Article 3.2.8 of the Constitution. The actual substantive effect of this would be to make the leeway, the, the, the gray zone boundary uh, between the novel and novella category 4,000 words instead of 5,000 words. Eight I thousand. Oh, I have the other right. Yes, I, I, you're right. At eight thousand instead of five thousand, because if only the twenty percent would apply. I, I, yeah, I got reversed. It. Sorry. So it's the um, anyway. Um, let me see. For what? Uh, first, yes. I'm Question: you, what, what do you what do you mean to move? To refer this to the Hugo Study Committee. No, I, I called. I no, I was trying to find out. I was trying to remind. I think it was in order. Uh, the motion is a motion to refer this item to the Hugo Award Study Committee. Is there a second? There being no second, the motion is not before the meeting. Dr. Lurie. I move to suspend the rules. Yeah. You want, uh, you're moving to suspend the rules and adopt this without any further debate or discussion? Yes. Is there a second? Second. Yes. All those in favor of suspending the rules and immediately adopting this motion, raise your hands. Hands down. Those opposed? Hands down. The rules are suspended, the motion is adopted, and is passed on to WorldCon 76 San Jose. Give me a moment before you do the rest of it. I know, you're, I know, you're, I know you really want it. Yes. Before we do the rest, and there isn't much rest, And I'm going to ask for the microphone back here, please. We're on slide 76, yes. Point of personal privilege, Mr. Chair. Question of privilege. Member will come to the microphone. Can you do it here or up over there? I've been the WISFIS deputy dip head this year, and I wanted to extend my thanks not only to you, the people who came to this meeting, but also to the top table for giving us amazing service, as they always do. Here, here. On behalf of everyone, thank you. Yes, and I want to reverse the thanks, as it were, to my own management in the WISFIS division. 
uh, Kate and uh, Gate Secor, Michael Lee, and to the people in the Worldcon 75 Committee in Programming and Facilities and Tech who were ex worried and perhaps legitimately so because I was of the potential massive disruption to an already uh, uh, difficult situation to them should more than 240 members of this convention wish to attend this meeting. <laughs> Which they might have done, you know. Okay. Thank you all for coming. I think we are at the end. Is there anyone who believes they should be making any announcements before we adjourn finally? Mr. Doherty, yes. May I offer a foreshadowed text for... Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, it's, I'll give it to you in a moment. It's, it, uh, I'm, I, the, um, Mr. Doherty has given me a motion in writing about adjournment. That's why I, uh, I want to look at it here. My final announcement that is that, once again, once we do adjourn, about 15 minutes after that, the Mark Protection Committee will meet in here, if we can, if we have enough people. Uh, otherwise, we'll, we'll figure something out, but that'll be it. We have time to finish, yes? Okay. Mr. Doherty has moved to um, adjourn Senior DA in memory and honor of David A. Kyle, Kathleen Meyer, and Peter Weston. Is there a second to this? Second. second. Is there any objection to so doing so? In that case, at uh, 10.33, the Business meeting of the World Science Fiction Society at the 75th World Science Fiction Convention is adjourned, CNEB, in memory of David Kyle, Kathleen Meyer, and Peter Weston. Thank you all.